So I quote, geometers presuppose or hypothesize eh, odd and even the various schemata, the various geometrical figures, the three types of angles and other things of the same kind. And they treat them as if they were already known and thus making hypothesis, presupposition out of them, they presume that they do not have to give account of them as if they were evident. Thus, starting from them, they reach the point they intend to investigate." End quote. In the second segment, so the second scientific method for the production of science, which defines for Plato the dialectics. How do you say? Dialectics or dialectics? Dialectics. dialectics. So. So, so in the second uh, method, I quote again, this is the very obscure passage I was referring to, language itself, autos o logos, grasps by means of the dialectical power treating the hypothesis, the presuppositions, not as arcas, as principle or origins, but truly as hypotheses, that is to say, as steps in order to reach the non-presupposed principle. And it's a very beautiful concept that Plato, Plato invents here, arche anipoteton, a principle not presupposal. So, what does it mean eh, to treat hypotheses truly as hypotheses? And what is uh, this uh, arche anipoteton? Eh? Very interesting concept. Eh? You have to reach a principle that you have not presupposed. If you remember eh, that the intelligibility of the paradigm is never presupposed, hypothesized. But that, you remember, on the contrary, eh, the specificity of paradigm resides precisely in the suspension of its immediate factual reference and in the exhibition of its intelligibility as such in order to give life to a new problematic context. Then, perhaps, to treat the hypothesis truly as hypothesis, and not as a principle, as an arche, may simply mean to treat them as paradigms. The paradigm is an hypothesis treated, exposed as such. That is to say, an hypothesis, a presupposition, whose intelligibility is no more presupposed, but exposed so that it allows us to reach an arche anipoteton, an unpresupposed principle. In this sense, eh, the dialectical method shows that in any theoretical or historical investigation, the object is never given, it can never be presupposed, it must be reached and constructed by means of paradigms. The fallacy, which remains unseen in the common usage of hypothesis, is that what appears as a given is in reality only a presupposition of the hypothesis, which should explain it. Thus, the origin, the unpresupposed principle, remains hidden. On the contrary, to show a phenomenon in its original or paradigmatic character, means to exhibit it in the medium of its knowability. So you have, you have no presupposed principle, it is the phenomenon itself that is, that is original. No more an origin, but an original <coughs> phenomenon. So while in the hypothesis the intelligibility of something is presupposed to it, and then reached by induction or by deduction, in the paradigm, the thing itself is shown beside itself, exposed.
pose in its own knowability. And uh, to conclude, I know no better definition of what I mean here than an extraordinary poem by Wallace Stevens, Description Without Place, uh, following Badiou's example, eh, I propose here to inaugurate a kind of a tradition in Sasfe. Uh, every lecture must end with a quotation of a poem by Wallace Stevens. <laughs> so, but let me read this uh, very extraordinary uh, poem, uh, Description Without Place. Let me read at least the first four verses. It is possible that to seem it is to be, and the sun is something seeming and it is. The sun is an example. What it seems it is, and in such seeming all things are. A paradigm, an example, is something which is what it seems, so that eh, in it being and seeming are undecidable. And perhaps philosophy and poetry coincide insofar as both are contemplation of phenomena in the medium of their seeming, of their knowability, as examples. Thank you. Thank you. Now I understand why you all the years stayed away from this topic. Because this is quite a difficult, <laughs> difficult topic. I always wondered, my God, have I studied philosophy ich, to be punished by that? <laughs> it is all this. And only at the end, at the end, you know, then we suddenly a light was going on and we understood somehow why paradigm is such an important thing. But what, we, what have you done until now? You probably used it uh, and not talked about it, you know, just used it yeah. Yeah. like it was seen. Now, yeah, I, I, had, I had the weakness to make an epistemological right, or mythological right. very, consideration. Very big, big point. But it helps you to protect you from the academic philosopher right. a bit, you know. Okay, my, I did phonology, dialectics, deconstruction, and hermeneutics in my, in my class in the beginning. So I treated them a little bit like that, but hopefully um, was a kind of preface to your thing. One thing I thought in that is it sounds very much like a phonological approach, which how the thing shows itself to you. And as you said, it is what it seems how it is seen. And, but there is this little problem Heidegger indicated in the beginning of being in time, that a phenomenon is something which cannot be seen at first glance. So this is a big difference to the phenological method used by sociologists who just believe if they kind of uh, describe what's going on, that's phenomenology. And we always have to tell them, no, no, wait, wait, wait. That what is seen needs the unseen. That what cannot be seen, but still belongs to the phenomenon in order to understand the phenomenon. So the paradigm you uh, describe must have a an, an hidden side, which is as much important as the revealed side uh, to it. So the good mm. message about trust what you see this message is poisoned. Trust what you see and then wait. They take it away again. Because there's still a task in there. You are not at the end. Mm -hmm. You just, the paradigm's only hope allows you to enter. But after that, darkness may come back. I'm sure I'm not saying to you anything new, but mm -hmm. that is my question when you is this praise of the paradigm, what is the other side to it? Yeah.